Today is the very first day that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet 151 is legal and today we're competing at a Pokemon tournament at Manta Trading right behind me. Very, very excited and I am not playing the deck that I typically play all the time. It's kind of a kind of a shocker, I know. Bro. We're also gonna be interviewing a couple of my friends in the shop, including Lil Dark Fury, and maybe my friend Vincent, who is also a fellow Maridon main as well. So most recently, I came in third place at a Pokemon challenge last Friday night in downtown Toronto at 401 Games, losing to Jackson Ford playing Double Turbo Mew. But I basically said today, hey, Grabber is a legal card today. I've been having some fun experimenting with Grabber, uh, the new trainer card in 151. If you don't know what it does, it is a trainer card that once you play it, you get to look in your opponent's hand, which is already busted. That's like a really good effect. And then you get to take a Pokemon from their hand and put it to the bottom of their deck. Ooh. So it is very, very annoying. So I've been playing it with Magnazone V-Star. I've been doing certain specific builds, which I won't leak, but losing to Dubber Turbo Mew felt really bad. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna join the dark side today. We're playing Double Turbo Mew with four grabbers inside. Bruh. And uh, I actually am at the tournament the earliest I've ever come. I th actually thought today's tournament was gonna start at six. Turns out it starts at seven. This is the first ever legal Pokemon card tournament where 151 is legal. And also Peoria Regionals is this weekend as well. So that's the first major where it's available. And I think a lot of the, the harder competition is at that event. So I'm not gonna have to worry too much about some people like Sashi who bring Belly Bolt specifically for me. Bruh. I hate you, Sashi. fellow Maridon player as well. I wanted to get your thoughts on 151 and uh, its impact on possibly Maridon and specifically. I've been playing 151 for a total of like maybe one day. Yeah. Solitaire hands. My previous deck with Maridon was with Jolteon. So it had kind of had a pseudo Zapdos already. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but when I'm playing a couple of games with Justin, I was like, I realized you have to plan your, your moves a lot more ahead, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot more gambling, but I think if you're not a skilled Maridon player, this Mew and this Zapdos is gonna really hit you hard. Yeah. It's not as, uh, you know, you just top deck cards and you win. Yeah. It's more like, oh, I gotta plan it. Become a more skillful deck compared mm -hmm. to what it was before. In terms of uh, Toronto Regional's viability, do you think Maridon might be a top pick for you? Or what do you think about it in terms of like the top 10 meta? I'd probably give Maridon like a tier 1.5. Okay. It's our better, more consistent decks, yeah. but the difference is Maridon's got a surprise factor mm -hmm. people can account for. So if you're, you're able to hit a couple electro generators and kind of flood your field with energies, you, yeah. it becomes really hard for them to win. Are there any like new decks from 151, like new archetypes that really pique your interest or any decks that you think their power level just goes crazy? Charlie gets a good bump, just in general, just because of the meta. Lugia gets a really good bump because they can they have more flexibility now. But one deck I've been playing lately is Tinkaton. Tinkaton? Yeah, okay. I've actually been liking that a lot. Okay. Hey, if you ever if you ever get like a top four at a local tournament with Tinkaton, I would love to do a deck profile with you. That'd be, I'm sure the people would love it too. <laughs> Matthew Wood, a Little Dark Fury. How are you feeling, man, with 151? What are your thoughts on it so far going into today's first legal tournament? I'm excited. I think that there's a lot of potential for cool decks. I'm playing something safe without giving away what I'm playing just yet because the term hasn't started. Yeah. I'm playing something a little bit safer, something something that I think I'm comfortable with. I've practiced with it a bit. I kind of know the matchups with the deck. Like against Colos Lugia, for example. Like I'm yeah. pretty pretty content with my list. And my 60, I think the 60 I got was really good. We'll see. I, I got to make up for the last two uh, cups and challenges I've been to. Yeah. Yeah. So I flopped out both of them. I went uh, like X1-3 drop last Manta Leak Challenge with Arc Keys. And then I went uh, X3 drop at Sky Fox Leak Cup. So like I've been flopping at Cups and Challenges. You know, I gotta I gotta make that comeback happen. Cause like I did pretty good at the last two Leak Challenges we've had here. I won one of them before Hartford and then I got a second another one. So I gotta redeem myself. So I'm gonna try try hard today. Top three cards you think are gonna make the biggest impact in 151? Mew EX definitely is the big one. I think Mew's gonna scare off Giratina a little yeah. bit. I think the Mew's just really good. I think it's one of the best cards in the format right now. There's potential for like some niche cards like uh, Grabber and Rigid Band. Yeah. The two items. Uh, Grabber, Mew is something that I've been seeing online. Um, and then Rigid Band is kind of good again. Uh, good for like those like stage one tanky decks. And I'm also kind of a fan of Zapdos EX. I think Zapdos EX could be good in Maridon. We haven't seen it pop off yet, but there yeah. is potential there. Forcing you to bench a Manaphy, yeah. especially when you only have like the one battle VIP 
he actually can make a difference in a matchup. What do you think is going to take the first and or second place finishes at the Peoria Regionals this weekend? I'm curious. Yeah, so I made a prediction on my second channel. Yeah, uh, what's your second doing, channel, by the way? Uh, LDF PTCG. All right, I'll link it down below. Appreciate it. We're actually trying to get eight, uh, 10K subs. 10K subs, and you out. just hit, what, 40K subs or 45K on the main? or uh, something? 49 right now. 49. Yeah, we're 600 away from 50K. 600 away from 50K. You'll yeah, hit it by the end of this month for sure. Hopefully. Yeah, that's, yeah. I want to get him full paradox drift. Yeah. <laughs> Charizard's going to be the most played deck because yeah. there's four ways to play it. It's yeah. going to be the most played deck. Uh, Lost Box will be popular because people like their Lost Zone decks. And then uh, I think Lugia, just because of the hype right now, it's definitely going to be popular. Those are going to be three big decks. Yeah. The deck that's close to win, in my opinion, is... Um, I think Gardevoir has a good chance of winning, and so does Lugia. I think we're going to see uh, at least maybe one or two Zards in top eight, one Lugia in top eight, probably one Lost on Very in top eight, a Gardevoir in top eight, maybe Tord in top eight. Maybe Tord. I know. he was in the area. Our local, our local legend, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Uh, Tord's a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> we know you love your rogue decks. Oh, yeah. What's a rogue deck you've posted on your channel recently that you think people should check out, and one that is coming soon that people should be waiting for because it's going to be really good. I'm a big fan of Zoro Box with the new Aerodactyl. I played it actually in a Manta last week. When I went 3-3 three three because I hit Rapid Strike and Lost Box too much, which obviously auto losses. But I beat Maridon and Charizard, yeah. and I beat the decks I was supposed to beat. Um, I just kept hitting like two bad matchups in a row. Zoro Box is a lot of fun. Aerodactyl is a big upgrade to the deck because against Charizard, you don't have to use Skull Villain Reversal. You can just go double turbo or reversal Aerodactyl. And every time they go Charizard, you just de-evolve it. Mm -hmm. And eventually you should win the prize trade or get to the point where you can slow bro checkmate them. With the new Arvinzard right now, um, you can easily do that. They do play Lost City, so I'm debating going back with maybe like two Aerodactyls in my build. At the time of recording this video, it's not out yet, but yeah. tomorrow's video is just a fun meme deck. It's going to be uh, Kabutops Kecleon, time for weakness. Okay, people love a fun meme deck. That sounds like a good time. Yeah, complete <laughs> meme. Not, not a good deck, like, yeah. competitively, but it's a very fun ladder stomp deck. Um, I actually yeah. ended up playing against like two Alakazams while recording, which is a bad matchup. Yeah. The deck only plays one boss, yeah. but I still won both games. Because, yeah, you can you can choose an energy to put on Kecleon, match mm -hmm. the type that the energy's on, so you turn to a grass type with a grass energy. With Kabutops in play, Kecleon does 90 times 4, which is going to do 360, so Ooh. you just one-shot oh Charizard. One-shot Gardevoir, one-shot Arceus, one-shot Lydia. Anything in the patch is one-shot, as long as you match the energy and you, you chain Raihan every turn. So they KO Kecleon, you just go Kecleon, Raihan, the energy back onto it, and then you attach uh, Rapid Strike energy, attack again, and that's, that's the deck. It's a fun, fun meme deck I was working on. Just since you mentioned it, thoughts on Alakazam EX, the first Pokemon that can be attacking from the bench. Do you think it's going to be viable down the road? Is it an okay spot right now? What do you think about Alakazam EX? So it's good. The issue is bad Charizard matchup. Um, yeah. You have to play Mimikyu and hope that they have no way to KO the Mimikyu because you only put one Zam in play. I've seen some like weird Alakazam Weezing decks, which I am working on for a video. Yeah. So I'm going to try that out. I think Alakazam's got potential. Just the popularity of Charizard will scare it off, but yeah. it is a cool card, and I think one day maybe it'll be good. All right, pairings are up. Good luck, oh, good luck. Good luck, man. Round one just wrapped up. We played against the homie Steven, and he was playing Gudra V-Star. I haven't seen Gudra in a long time. My one friend Sashi that teched against me a couple weeks ago with that belly bolt. He was playing that deck in uh, the Orlando Regionals a long time ago. And I wasn't expecting to seeing any Gubja at all today, but there's a couple running around. But yeah, I cooked. Muvi Max did its thing. I absolutely hit exactly what I needed every single time. Grabber feels really good in the deck. And I also hit four tails for Kramomatic, which is it's kind of sad, but I still want it. So uh, so yeah, Mew v Max. I, I, now I remember why I hate this deck so much. It's just so good and it takes so little skill to play. Round number two is done, and I just realized I have uh, the game What Do You Meme in my backpack, so now I have a fun V-Star marker that I can use for today. I also gave a couple other people some fun V-Star markers. And round two, we played against Shen Pao. Shen Pao and friends. And I gotta say, today's deck choice was perfect for against Shen Pao, because you got Path to the Peak, you got Grabbers in there too, you got Judge for Disruption, the deck felt absolutely amazing against Shen Pao, and they didn't take any prizes until their very last turn, where they had to put six water energies onto their, uh, onto their Shen Pao to hit for 360 for KO. I dominated the entire game. This deck is disgusting. I hate, I hate how good it is. We'll see how we go for round three, though. Hopefully we can dodge those evil cards we shall not name, because I don't want to manifest them into the, <laughs> onto the table. So 
well, I thought I was going to be toxic today by playing Mew VMAX, but it turns out there was one more demon out here not playing Mew VMAX, but playing something worse, playing something diabolical. He's our like local troll player who's currently now 3-0 after beating me. Um, he was playing the Spit Ops Venomoth deck. So he beat Matt earlier and uh, LDF and he beat Charizard because Matt's playing Charizard. Then against me, I just have four energies in the deck. This dude has the Crushing Hammers by his side and Venomoth as well. I made the mistake of using Grabber, so I got to see his hand and then I was possessed by the demons Bruh. somewhere in, in, in Toronto to play my judge card. Bruh. So I gave him a whole new hand and that hand is basically just, all he needed to do was play Venomoth once and item lock every single turn. And uh, yeah. yeah, I decked out. <laughs> I did. It was bad, man. Oh my goodness. All right, we're two and one. We're two and one. We got three more rounds left to go. If we get one more loss, I'm just gonna go home. Round number four just wrapped up and we played against one of the worst matchups I want to say for my deck, Mew VMAX. We played against Charizard EX. It's been blowing up in popularity ever since its high uh, high rankings at the recent regionals and special events, but the power of Path to the Peak, the power of Grabber, Judge, great cards. They never got to attack once all game, so felt really good. We have the homie Slipper Talk from the main channel, Robert, so we're gonna get him to say hi, say hi real, real quick. quick. And, and uh, uh, what well, brings you, you here today, today Rob? Uh, uh, I was actually watching one of uh, my boy's old videos. I guess okay, it's okay. the newest video yeah, at yeah. the time of recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was talking about this deck here. Your are okay, okay. And I was like, okay. hey, I got that deck. Yeah, so yeah. I just, you know, I haven't seen my cousin in a while too. <laughs> I was feeling nostalgic, so I pulled up. So now so we're, now we're gonna run some games. games. Round number five just wrapped up and we played yet again another Charizard EX back-to-back -back games and the Mew V Max is absolutely insane. Judge, Path, Prey, Pop Off. That's all, not even Judge, Path, Prey. It's Judge, Path, Pop Off. That's all you gotta do. Another easy win against Charizard EX. They didn't get a single attack in, I think, the entire game. I hate to say I love this Mew V Max deck. It's, it's so evil. I hate this deck. It's just so good and broken. One more round left. I don't know what uh, table I'm at, but hopefully I get up paired. And so if I win in the up pair, I probably get to win the full tournament. Uh, but either way, if I win this next one, I'm pretty sure I can lock in the top four placement, which is what I need. If I get fifth to eighth, it doesn't even matter. I need top four to get points. So here we go, here we go, here we go. For round number six, we played against a lost Tina deck, lost Giratina V-Star, and uh, it was a very, very close game. I only had one Mew VMAX on the board pretty much the entire game, and it came down to getting Rock Sand back-to-back -back turns, and me just needing to hit the cards I needed. I had Rope Boss for one turn where I needed it to KO one Giratina V-Star, and then I was able to close it out in the end. The second Rock Sand gave me Mew V and Power Tablet, so I was able to play those two cards to clone the uh, Psychic Cleaver attack off Mew V, so I wouldn't need to switch out for the following turn. So a solid showing for today's tournament. Our final record is five wins, one loss. I'm not sure what place I'll be getting for the overall standings. I'm thinking second. I think I see the standings, so let's go check it out. All right, so the final standings are right here. We got second place out of 36, 5-1. Not too shabby. Prize time, since we got second place, we've secured three beautiful play packs right here. And I also have two more play packs in my backpack from another tournament that I won. So we're gonna open up five play packs right now, all back to back. I don't know how much store credit I have either, but uh, yeah, I'll have it pop up on screen, the amount of store credit I won. And before we go, let's open up five play pack series three. We're getting second today at this tournament. We got three prize pack series three. Let's bust these bad boys open. First pack, we got Lucario, Damage Pump, Gallade, ooh, Fire Energy, very nice. And Hasuian Basculin, ugh, yuck. Second pack, all right, here we go again. Arvin, Lost Vacuum, Regigigas, ooh, nice, Electric Generator, and a Lucario EX, very, very cool. Very nice. I think you can only get this as a, uh, a deck promo. Third pack now from today's tournament. We got Lost City, Tatsuguri, Lipard, another Fire Energy. All right, not too bad. 
and a Alolan's Vulpix V-Star. That's really sick. Two more packs to go. These were from another tournament, so let's open up these two prize pack series three. Solrock, Arvin, Sableye, okay. Ooh, Ultra Ball Hollow, very nice. And a Switch Card Hollow. That's also really, really good. One last prize pack series three. Magma Basin, Sharon's Care. Ooh, non hollow Sky Seal Stone. Ew, Whale Lord. <laughs> okay, and another Hasui. <laughs> I have four of these. Oh my gosh. If you guys like today's video, check out my most recent international Pokemon tournament vlog, my first ever Pokemon regional vlog, and when it's up, the Pittsburgh Pokemon regionals vlog, where I got 138th place. I'll catch you guys in one of these videos. Peace out.